There are three of us here today. She's up all night till the sun. I'm up all night to get some. He's up all night for good fun. We're up all night to get Loki. Welcome to Infinity Rewatch. Ooh, that's right. Yeah. I'm Andrew Fantasia. I'm Ryan J. Whitehead. I'm Anna. And this is episode five of Loki Journey into Mystery. Oh my God, there was a lot of mystery solved and presented, brought to the table. This was just, this was a, a fun episode. We all kind of watched it together virtually, safely. Uh, and now we're talking about it together. Welcome, everybody. Um, Ryan. Yes. Here's a question for you. I want you to pretend that I am a person who has not yet liked and subscribed to this podcast and told my friends about the podcast. What would you want me to do step by step to remedy that? Well, you know, I feel like Anna would be the best person to describe this, you know, being that she's new to this hosting party. Um, oh, but I mean, I'll, I'll help. I'll help both of you get started and say that you just you got to go on to the, your podcast channel thingies. I don't know what you call them. Po- applications. And uh, then, then you look up, then you look up Rebel Scum Podcast Network. Okay, there, Grandpa and then Whitehead. Happened, <laughs> okay, Grandpa Whitehead. <laughs> okay, so this is what you're gonna do. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, you're gonna need to get yourself uh, Spotify or, or whatever. Where, go to whatever um, podcasts are found. Subscribe to Rebel Scum Podcast, and then listen to the three of us giggle like schoolgirls talking about Loki. I think that's great. No better time. No better time than now. Smash it. Smash that button. Hulk smash. Hulk smash. Treat that button like you would not want to be treated. (laughs) Be violent with that button. Leave a bruise on that button. Mm -hmm. I don't care. We're going dark because it's Loki. (laughs) It's Loki. Episode five, people. Episode five. It's been a journey. Um, I can't believe we're at episode five, personally. We have one more left. Uh, and I honestly thought we were going to get a little bit more than what we got. But in the end, we got a lot more. <laughs> we got a lot more of the feels. They really jacked up the emotions to 11 on this one. Am I right, people? Anna, what are we feeling on the emotions? I really love this episode. I, I, I actually could not sit down. I was pacing the whole time watching it because it was just so intense. And to be honest with you, I really liked um, a lot of the digging deep, emo- like emotionally for Loki, for him to question himself and for him to be faced with himself literally and, and you know, um, metaphorically, it was really nice. I, I Actually, this is my favorite episode. Ooh. Mm. And you just Ooh. finished watching it, I just right? Like it you're still yes. vibrating from yes. this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really had to. Really had to get that double check in there. You know, make sure we got everything. Didn't miss anything like that. Well, I um, I so Fantasia, I for you. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that though. So uh, Fantasia, for you, was it all the feels? Did you feel like this is the best episode ever? It was, I don't know if I would call it my favorite yet. That's something I still have to really see the whole picture from far away, including episode six, before I can say what my favorite was. But I definitely felt the feels. I definitely felt um, the, the the friendship between Loki and Sylvie and between Loki and Mobius. Like pulling Mobius in for that bro hug when it was like, I'm not going to shake your hand. We're friends now. And like, I, I, I'm right there with him because I want to be friends with Mobius too. He's a great guy. And I love mm-hmm. that they've made up now and now they're all, you know, fighting this fight together. Uh, this was, even though there was a giant storm cloud in it, this really was the calm before the storm that we needed after the crazy robot lizard timekeeper business of last week. So I like this little breather. It's a nice little palate cleanse. And it gave me the feels appropriately while also setting me up for what I think is going to be a sad ending. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
Sad ending, you say. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll when we get to the end, we'll let speculation go wild. We're going to let the Feige radar, we don't even care anymore. We're going to toss that out the window and everyone's going to put their best theory foot forward and say that 10 times fast. And we'll we'll dissect what each of us are going to be thinking where the show's going. Um, I'm I'm also a little shocked we didn't get no Kang. I feel like we're still going to get a Kang. I just, we didn't get no Kang. And that's something I'm really upset about, people. I want my Kang. <laughs> give me Kang already. I, just give it to me. I feel like if you, it, we're not going to get a Kang if you keep asking for it. Like, what? Yeah. Come on. I don't Come know. Come on. I, this is the... You're in Kang's house. You literally have like wiped your feet on his like welcome mat and like you're in the world of the TVA and you're just like, woo, here's the living room, here's the kitchen, here's the bedroom where all the magic happens. And we're in that bedroom, people. The bed is bed has been made. We're getting ready to sleep in it. Like we have been welcome to the wonderful world of Kang. So how would you not see him? How would you not see him? I feel like because we were so desperate for Mephisto and um, WandaVision that I, we might get a different, just, I don't know, a different outcome. I don't know what that is. Like, I still have my theory that Lady L Sylvie is not a Loki. I don't, I think she's still not a Loki. It's just even more evident. In this Interesting. Episode. It's just more evident in this episode. Well, let's do a bit of a deep dive, right? So Loki has finally, I think, come to terms with his, you know, he's a narcissist, his narcissistic, uh, you know, behavior and how it's not only extremely self-destructive, but it's, you know, there he's, it's, a, he will never get ahead, right? He keeps striving for more of this like bigger purpose, but you know, you rule the world and you want to rule the galaxy, everything, but after that, then you're done, right? So when he's faced with himself, he's realizing how impossible it is to move forward, right? Because you can't make a cohesive plan with someone you can't trust. You can't ever follow through with someone you can't trust. And you'll never get to your end goal with someone you can't trust. So it was really nice to see him really recognize his behavior. And I guess why I still don't believe why she's a Loki is because she doesn't exhibit any of those things. So it could either be one or two things. Maybe because she was pulled out of her timeline so early, she never committed a lot of the shitty things Loki did growing up, right? Like, he, she's never gone through Ragnarok. She's never gone through the events in New York. She's never gone through any of that. Or she never got to have a rivalry with the girl version of Thor, right? So her purpose is self-driven, right? To, to go home where every Loki's purpose is self-driven to just win with no real purpose which is that line that that uh that girl said she doesn't want she doesn't want it she needs it yeah so mm -hmm. I, I still feel like she's not a loki she doesn't call herself loki she even when they pulled her out of the timeline she didn't she didn't dress like a loki anyways like even her clothing all they're, although they're green they're very dark they're like the darkest green where it's almost black so i feel like we're not it, this she's still and i feel like this the end i think fantasia's right i think it's going to be a sad ending because there's something to do with her hmm i like that i do i <sighs> I like that like, because for me as a comic book fan, I want her to be Enchantress. And in yeah. fact, they dropped the enchanted word almost too many yeah. times. Like it just seems she's not even saying like, I'm going to use my magic. She says, I'm going to enchant it. Yeah. You know, they like that word so many times. I was expecting Amy Adams to pop up in a dress and be like, <laughs> she, still be enchantress. <laughs> she could, she, she could. I mean, it could still happen. It's Disney. Anything can happen at this point. Mm -hmm. But my, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think that her motives in this in this instance here is that her world was taken away from her. So it only seems fair for her to take away their world. And it's just kind of I think it is that simple. Like, cause she, like even if she could go back, she does. She's not familiar with it. She's already been raised to a point where, she, you know, she doesn't even know what's familiar to her anymore. So the only thing to do is if I can't have it, you can't have it. So like take it away like that kind of attitude so i i personally feel like through loki she's learning she's learning um you know what she can be and what she can do but personally for me i i think it's a simple like 
you know, it's a simple, you taking this from me, I'm going to take this from you. So you understand how it feels of what you did to me. And, and that's the kind of payback and revenge that she's going for. Um, I really kind of, I, I love the, the different Lokis and I agree that she definitely doesn't behave like one. I mean, you know, like any old classic villain, like a Loki, uh, you know, the biggest problem is dealing with people betraying you all the freaking time. I mean, when we saw Loki, all the Lokis in one room, I'm like, yo, one of them's going to snap on each other and it's just going to be yeah. one massive Loki battle inside. And I knew that was coming because that's, it's you know, the Decepticons had that problem. Loki's had that problem. I mean, any Marvel villain has had that problem numerous times. They're always, always, always dealing with themselves. They're their own worst enemy. And that's true. We we met a bunch of Lokis this week. Well, we technically met them last week, but whatever. Um, they made a big impact this week. Anna, what did you think of these three, four, four, four new Loki's? Alligator Loki? That we met. Alligator oh, Loki. Crokey. His name's Crokey. Oh, Crokey. Alligator Cro- uh, Loki was the best. I actually really like classic Loki. Uh, one, because it was, it was so interesting to see him like, uh, you know, like I've cr- caused so much destruction and chaos. And at the end, like I chose isolation. And even then it's like, even at the end, his death was kind of... Oh, I guess his death had purpose, right? I, I think he was my favorite. Glorious yeah. purpose! Yeah. He was honestly my favorite yeah. because it uh, it was interesting to see that... Because in a, basically all the time, like, Loki dies. At the end, Loki always dies because when, you, you know, you can only go through the loop of betrayal so much before you get back, right? And that's inevitably what happened. So it was nice to see kind of older Loki recognizes like, it's never going to work out for me. So I might as well just disappear. And I guess it was a different end to what I was seeing with other Lokis. And I don't know. I don't know. I really like that. I just really like that this episode was so reflective, was so reflective of really toxic behaviors, like, you know, narcissistic individuals and how exhausting it is for the person you know, you're, you're the, you know, Sylvie, the partner, Mobius, the friend, how ex- extremely exhausting it is because you can't be trusted. They can't believe what you say. So you can't get anywhere with them. So it was nice to kind of see all these small reflections of Loki and seeing like, if he doesn't change, like he'll never build these meaningful relationships. And also he'll never be able to get anywhere. He'll just be stuck here with all these idiots. I, I just really love this episode for that. I thought it was a really interesting deep dive on, on on kind of you know toxic toxic loki behaviors <laughs> they do they do cover that though full circle in thor and i love how they in thor ragnarok and i love how they kind of take it that step further because yeah. in thor ragnarok thor thor gets to that <laughs> that that conflict point and he says like oh round and round we go like you know same old you make the same you do keep doing the same thing. It's becoming predictable. And then, you know, obviously it leaves them behind. And um, it's, uh, it is a real, it's a real moment of growth for Loki. I agree with you. And it's, it's interesting how he kind of comes to that moment and seeing with old Loki, which I love is that like old Loki was the smartest one. Like he knew, which if you, if you guys go into Twitter and just follow the Loki trend there are some hilarious posts. And one of them was, one of them was like, finally they get it. Like, why would Loki go up against Thanos with a dagger? Like he's not that stupid. And, and, and at the same time though, it, it just goes to show you, I think that Loki that we saw in Endgame, that was just blind. Like he was just blind to like protecting Thor and like embracing like his love for Thor and he's supposed to die and that's it. Whereas old Loki was like, I'm not stupid. Like, I'm not going to go up against Thanos with a dagger. Like, that's dumb. Like, and like, in the end, like he learns through avoidance that he does love his, love Thor, like in that, that actualization. So I, I, I have to agree with you. Like, it's interesting how they look at like the, the toxicity of like narcissism and, and like, you know, how people can really like people with these kind of mental issues can really just harm themselves and and it's and i love that they use the language of like 
variants and like different timelines and stuff because it's really you know whenever you come across a decision like you do feel like what would have what would have been like had i done x or had i done y um and and i think by playing with the world of var- time variants and stuff it's really fun to see what someone with that kind of toxic behavior would be like meeting the different versions of themselves making these different decisions Another fun post I saw was like, why isn't anyone talking about that kid? Yeah. That kid yeah, killed Lord. his brother. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What the fuck? Like, like, holy shit. What happened to you, you little sociopath? Like, you fucking killed your brother? <laughs> like, like, what? Like, whoa, man. That's dark. Well, like, whoa. That's like Loki you know? was like my leash. <laughs> Walk through. <laughs> like, this guy kills people. Like, that's how dark it is. Like, I know. There's a universe with a dead Thor out there. Well, probably a child dead Thor. Good question. And I'm sorry. Did you guys? No, did you no. Guys I... Peep. Was it? I think an episode. No, yeah, it was the last episode. You know when they're going into the bunker, and you see Thor's hammer, and then you see this little Thor, and it's the vintage Thor to the vintage little Loki. He's not fucking dead. He's miniature. What? Yes, I took a screenshot of it. You- yes, I took a screenshot. Give me a second. Yes. Oh my yes. god. <gasps> no. I, yeah, it was the camera panned yes. down, right? I think oh, I remember no. this. It panned down and, and like Mjolnir was buried in the dirt. It was like a yes. visual gag. And did you not hear? Yeah, there's a yes. little Thor bouncing around. Oh, shoot. I did not yeah. oh, didn't let me take it. I'm sorry. Uh but yes. It's this oh, it's this glass canister and it has a number like five, it's, I think it's like 567 something. And there's this I know what you're talking about. Thing, but it's, I, I paused it. I had to pause it a couple times and it's really dark. You can't, it's hard to see it. Like put up the brightness, but it's vintage mm-hmm. Thor. It's vintage Thor and he's like miniature and he's stuck in there. He's not freaking dead. If I, wow. The picture, the picture I saw is, 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 is it's, he's a frog. It's, it's Throg. It's the, uh, he turned him into a frog. From that first issue yeah because because when you mentioned the glass canister and the number i saw that photo and it's it's the reference to throg where where he turned thor into a frog he's not dead he's a liar (laughs) he's a fucking liar i don't know it it seems like he killed him you know (laughs) (laughs) because but see the thing is like that's what goes back to full circle loki does these things narcissists hurt people because they're terrified of being alone and right, and it, mm. and it creates like a cat and mouse situation, right? He does something bad, Thor reacts, and he knows that's repetitive. So it's like, in a really fucked up way, it's like their way of spending time. To, instead of saying, hey, can we spend time together? I'm just going to be really shitty so you give me attention. So it's like a back and forth, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I just could that's why in my head it's like I could not imagine little Loki killing his brother. Unless little Loki's like, no, like I am steel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to kill my dad, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, my mom's done. That's why it's like, I just can't. I, can't I mean, <laughs> I mean, what what I love also about it, because, like, again, I think the beauty of of this show and the way they're writing these shows is it's not only that are we getting, like, this beautiful, like you said, this beautiful look at, like, uh, mental health issues but like what also we're getting is i love that we're getting marvel actually acknowledging different comic book worlds and being like yeah we know this happened this way like we get it we get it this is the story we're telling and here's your little nod to make sure that you know that we know we know what we're doing you know it's but it's fun because it's it's also fun to see how you can do different stories but yet still do your own and forge your own path at the same time. Yeah. Like we, and we've talked about this, I think last time the three of us were on how they're, they've gotten to be masters at saying, we're going to give you character Y, but she'll be wrapped in the wrapping paper of character Mm -hmm. Z. So you're kind of getting two characters for the price of one. Mm -hmm. Like, We'll probably get Enchantress, but she came wrapped in a Lady Loki yeah. bow. And that's kind of, you know, we get to have our cake and eat yeah. it too. And that's great because we all like cake here, I'm assuming. 
I do. I, I love. Cake. I definitely. I don't. Do. I. I think yeah. I don't I mean, like cake. There's a problem. Pie is better, but. <laughs> I love that. Well, welcome to the Anna and Ryan show. Like <laughs> cakes, guys. We love we like cakes. This is how decisions are made. This is how democracy is made. Cakes or pies, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, okay. So, in the, speaking of the last episode, on the podcast, we talked about that wonderful throne room scene. Mm-hmm. Loved it to death. Love that we got, saw robotic Kangs with the cool theme park kind of feel. Um, and... So we were debating, was uh, uh, Renova Renslayer, did she, uh, oh, sorry, Ravana Renslayer, did she, was she shocked when she found out they're robots? And so right now she seems to be playing the card that that she didn't know. She didn't know they were robots. Mm-hmm. And so now she's, but she seems to still trust the plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So guys, what are we feeling? What's what's the what's the thoughts and feels here? Let's start with Fantasia this time. Deja, what's the thoughts and feels? Renslayer is yeah, she's still a big cipher to me because she was one million percent, for lack of a better term, the villain of this episode. She is, you know, every character that we are rooting for, she is actively trying to stop them. Uh, so the fact that she is going about this business. Having Miss Minutes look this stuff up. Oh, Miss Minutes is back. Um, having you know this this one on one chat with uh, the guard lady and saying like, "Oh, you shouldn't have done what you did. You shouldn't have broken the protocol." She is actively, you know, standing in our protagonist's way, but she still has not given us a concrete answer of like. Yeah, I uh, I'm just as surprised as you that those guys were robots, or I'm not surprised at all because I knew all along. You're right; it just seems to be a laser focused determination to keep things running the way they're running, and that to me is baffling because that can take her in many different directions. And I I think if I had to put money down on it right now, I think it kind of points towards her knowing all along what's been happening. Mm. Uh, I don't know. She seems, because when you see her last week and she walks into that big scary room full of smoke and dry ice and there's just three huge robots, uh, she looks the way I would look, which is frightened and apprehensive. So why be frightened and apprehensive if you know they're robots? She, Nothing she's doing is making any sense to me and I think that's by design. So I am just, I, I just paint a big old question mark over Renslayer and I'm just waiting for kind of her other shoe to drop for her to let us know where she stands and why. Cause she just, I got, I have no clue with her. I feel like maybe it's a little simpler. Maybe she is just holding on to just her sanity, right? I mean, if they were brainwashed to believe that they were just, designed or made to work for the TVA it's hard to imagine your especially because in in that I guess like that scene with her and Mobius it was a very intimate moment and even for her she st- kind of like allowed herself a small amount of in- like professional intimacy and then paused so I don't know I feel like mm-hmm. it could be some sort of like mental restraint or like having control like losing her reality because I inevitably as she's aware that that's what's going to happen like all of this is gone the purpose is gone so maybe it's her way of holding on to purpose yeah I it might yeah right. or she's a robot <laughs> they're all robots, they're all robots. <laughs> I was waiting for most you're robots. absolutely right though Anna like it we we can't expect it to be as easy as it was with the guard to be like, wow, everything I've ever known yeah. is a lie. Well, time to change my trajectory. Yeah. Like, we can't expect it to be that easy for everybody. Some people are going to refuse to see the truth when it's staring them in the face. So you're absolutely right. It could just be a question of Renslayer is just putting the blinders well, on. She's in because... a position of power, right? She's yeah. a judge. She, she gets to be close to the timekeepers, the space lizard, the space lizards. So may, maybe she gets extra perks, you know? Why lose that? Sometimes people are afraid of losing power. Yeah. 
I personally, me, I'm getting some real Wizard of Oz vibes from this yes. show. Personally, behind the curtain, am I like, yep. am, yeah, behind the curtain? Yeah. Like I was gonna say, am I the only one that's seen this? Because like. To me, that whole scene, the whole setup of of the the last episode, not the one we're currently talking about, the whole setup here is that I, everyone's afraid of the timekeepers, and the, you know the time because the timekeepers they keep the sacred timeline. They're super powerful, right? But Loki's learning that it's all lies and deception, which is a similar kind of experience to the Wizard of Oz. Once you you know get past what the wizard does, and you move the curtain, and you find out it's a guy operating a machine. Um, in this case, I still feel like that's pretty much the, the case here and that Ravana is, um, I think Ravana believes in the will of Kang, of what Kang does and what they can accomplish. She believes in that. Um, uh, whereas Mobius lost faith the second he realized that Loki was right. Um, and so she still believes because of just what she's seen and, and the overall experience, um, and I think once the curtain is raised, she will fall in love with Kang more um, because she realizes what this person was able to accomplish. Um, and also for comic book fans, and this is what caught almost caught on off guard here, but they did mention a time craft, which is known as Damocles. Damocles is uh, the ship that Kang uses to travel uh, to, to the 21st century in order to, uh, to clean up the timeline. So that's that's what the ship Damn, right. when they were talking about I yeah, that's when they were talking about the time craft. I almost jumped out of the couch because I was like, oh my God, they're talking about Damocles. And <laughs> uh it's it's a giant spaceship that looks like a sword, a giant massive sword. Um <clears throat> so uh personally for me though, I am getting some heavy Wizard of Oz vibes. Yeah. And it's one of those, but in the end I think it's going to be one of those things where after the curtains raise, you realize this person is still very much like a wizard in the sense, like a very much that they do have these powers and that they can do certain things with it, even though the curtains have all been raised. And we kind of get a sense of that near the end with the giant cloud monster thingy and just make me. And then there's like a little, you know, once the whole monster has gone, there seems to be this castle in the middle of the whole thing. Yes. So I love that you mentioned Wizard of Oz because I 100% agree with you. That last shot was so impressive. It reminded me of Dorothy walking down the yellow brick road and then seeing the Emerald City. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. especially because they're um, that like little, the the green from their powers kind of did like a, almost like a pathway. I just, it was so reminiscent, reminiscent of the Wizard of Oz. It made me think I was like, maybe, maybe the wizard is just Loki. A stronger, more power. Well, not more powerful. I guess like a wiser Loki that knows his own power. Yeah, that would be an interesting payoff if that is the case. That it's like the evilest and most powerful Loki, Loki of them a all. A very self-aware Loki. A self-aware Loki. Yeah, and that would not feel out of place for the show no. at all. In fact, it would be very very in place it would be it, it almost feels like they're trying to point us in that direction and i i do love that visual that might be my yes. favorite visual so far of this yes. whole show of like the smoke parting and you just see this giant old mansion off in the distance that they're going towards that just makes me so happy and the emerald city comparison i want to take that a step further and ask you guys a question here okay if Everybody in the TVA, we now know, is just um, a variant that have been put there to work there. What about everybody who lives in that city of Chronopolis we saw outside the window? Is that even real? Do Does Mobius actually have a home that he goes to at the end of the day? Or is he lied to and just told he has one, but he never gets to leave the office? feel like it's the latter like it's a time loop because you never see him go Oof. home they never talk about re they yeah. never reference home they never reference leaving they're always just there mm -hmm. they're always just yeah. there i think it's just either another allu an illusion or just some sort of time loop where they're just seeing that there's an outside and there's like 
you know, what better way to keep you with captivity than making you leave, making you believe that you can leave at any time. And I mean, talk about social commentary exactly. on the, you know, on the structure of society and like, business yes, they, it's like if you're told you can leave at any time, you don't feel like you're trapped. You're just going to keep going. It's like, well, I can leave at any time. I can go home anytime. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, sorry to bring this up. True. What I found really interesting is that Rovina would not tell Sylvie what her variant, what was the thing that she did that made her a variant? What was her nexus? Yeah. What was her nexus event? She's a liar. She knows mm-hmm. what it is. If she even like, cause the show made a point that episode made a point of making, if the beginning of the episode of Rovina remembering that moment in time where she went and grabbed Sylvie and lost Sylvie. She remembers what her nexus event is. Right. I, you know, it, it's funny. First of all, it's funny you're calling her Rowena when it's Ravana. Ravana sorry, it's like Ravana. Yeah, Ravana. Rowena. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but but you're right. I think they they seem to be hinting at the idea that she clearly knows, but she doesn't want to. She does. She's obviously lying. Um, I don't know. Like. For me, I think that, first of all, I think that is, I, I personally think it's a city. I think it is like its own little thing. I just think it's an, it's one that looks busy and populated, but it's not. It's, it's you know, just very, like, essentially the TVA just lives there. Um, and uh, if, if this Chronopolis lives in the quantum realm time doesn't really exist because time just kind of stands still. And mm-hmm. so that means that that I kind of agree with the idea that that means there's no real end to the workday. You're just in a constant state of being because there's no, you know, I am sure they don't get paid overtime or whatever. Cause again, it just doesn't, there's no beginning and end of time. Right. So they just work, 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 work until the job's done. And, be, and, and, I mean, even Mobius does say in like the very first episode, and it's also part of the trailer, is time moves differently here at the TVA, right? So it's hard to say how long he's been doing his job, which I don't know if you were someone who was working as long as Mobius has, I'm pretty sure you know down to the day, you know, or at least at least to the year, how many years you've been working at the job. Well, the fact that he was it's like, I really hope to my other timeline, I had a jet ski. Like this guy thinks about not being there exactly yeah yeah so i mean first of all i'm glad that mobius is still alive um and doing his thing i i personally feel like we may see more of him in other projects yes oh I god damn it so. i hope so <laughs> that is such a great character i love him i hope he rep- oh man i i oh man he's so i really liked him i was so sad i was so sad when i thought he was dead there's a moment up his little pizza I cart know. so that i can fly through space <laughs> And he just drives around and he's like, oh, hey, Guardians, what's up, guys? I I think we will see him for sure and probably Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp, because he just feels like a character that fits perfectly alongside Jimmy Woo, yeah. um, you know, just uh, Scott Lang, like that, just that level of humor and the interaction, I feel like we're going to see more of uh, Mobius. But do you think he would be a, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent or not? No, no, I think he's going to be a, I think he's going to play a Coulson like oh. role in 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 serving the TVA in terms of like as opposed to protecting the timeline he's he's going out there and like recruiting heroes because that's in the comic books that's what he does. He was he was a judge uh in the in the trial of the Fantastic 4 and he was the one that said like no, these guys are these guys are one of the good ones and they're fighting for the the, the appropriate way, the, the appropriate flow of time. So I think that he's going to help. He's going to help people, you know, get into the appropriate way of things. Because think about it, like, well, that's why I like the kind of journey, you know, as we get more into talking about Mobius, that's why I kind of like the journey he has. And in, in, especially in this episode where he still is talking, he's, it's, it's funny because he doesn't do interrogation. He does like a reverse interrogation in the sense that he's he's trying to get you to understand what your goal is as opposed to feeding, like getting it out of you so you can understand the motives of the character and what, what have you or like understand why the crime happened. He's trying to get you to understand like, like what do you want? Like tell me just like let's figure this out for you because it's cl- like clearly what you're doing is not working. And, and it's not even like, clearly you're doing this because you're, you know, 
this is why the crime exists. It's like, it's, he's trying to bring the best out of these characters. And that's why I love when he finally kind of meets up with both of them and they, and he, they hug him because he, he brought the best out of them. Like he, he legit, like, like even he wanted to talk to Sylvie because he wanted to understand like, you know, her position and everything. Why is she so, why is she like getting all this special attention from, uh, uh, Ravana? And when he was talking to her in the car, like there was, like he just has these genuine connection with these characters and creates kind of a, a, a team, you know what I mean? So I for sure down the road, see him being a more Colson character and, and gluing, you know, characters together at, at a point where, you know, they would most likely come apart. This is like the best That's a character. Owen, the best character Owen Wilson's ever picked for himself. Like best. Yeah. Hands oh. down. And hmm. to be, to become the next Coulson is so fitting because Loki took the first Coulson away from the world. So now he gets to usher yes, the new one into it. Yes, I love Well that. I love played. That. Bravo, That's sir. So well good. played. Good use. Good form. But yeah, I definitely think we'll see more of Mobius. I actually, personally, um, I, I feel two things. Loki is going to set up a new Coulson, but that's why I feel like we're still going to get a Kang because I think we're going to get Kang because, but we're going to get it in like a uh, end of Avengers kind of scene where, you know, he stands up out of his chair and just turns around and you see Kang like that kind of thing. I, I, I honestly feel we will see him whether or not we'll get an entire scene is an entirely different story, I but I definitely think no, 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 because I feel like we'll get like kind of a similar thing where like the the henchman dude is like uh, to challenge them is to court death, right? Like, like I feel like Ravana is going to come after like the whole TVA has been like completely exposed and destroyed, and she's going to be like, we we got to fix the timeline, and then just like he just stands up all Kang like and just like let's do it. Um, can we can we make a whole movie about? Thanos' henchman and have you yes. play him, please. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny when I saw the actor who played him. It's just like the, when you see his face, you're just like, that's the last person you'd think that 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 would play that kind of role. Yeah, it's Denisov, uh, man. It's uh, it's uh, Buffy. It's what's his face from Buffy and Angel, and he's like a handsome ass dude, and he's just sitting there with his alien mouth. Uh, <laughs> what what if Feige messes with you, Ryan, and he gives you Kang, but he gives you Kang from The Simpsons, Kang and Kodos. He gives you one of the two aliens. Um, uh, he's like, yeah, you wanted Kang. There's Kang. I feel like and they're going like, to be disappointed. Please. I don't know why. I feel like it's just too many hints. You know what it is? It's too many hints. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we saw that a lot in WandaVision with Mephisto. True, but that, but to be uh-huh. fair, to give, mm-hmm. to give, to give Feige... <laughs> No, to give Feige the benefit of the doubt here, which which also on the note of Mephisto, we now know who Richard E. Grant is playing, so that you know Mephisto clue is completely out the window here. Um, but it does feel like he points out Mephisto a lot. Anywho, uh, anywho, uh, I do have to give Feige the benefit of the doubt here because, to be fair, he will give us an inch and we will run miles. <laughs> like, like we will just like freaking like. <laughs> And just like just book it and get there faster than Quicksilver. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of debatable. But to me, it just, again, you're in, you're in Kang's world. Why wouldn't you see him? Like, and, and supposedly if, if the story is building the way it's supposed to be building and he's supposed to be the next Thanos, then why wouldn't they just introduce him in, in Loki? It's the perfect platform for him. Especially if we're not going to see him till Ant Man of the Wasp: Quantum Mania, give or take, depending on what stories we see from now till then. So I doubt we're going to see him in Song Chi. Yeah. We may see him in the Eternals, maybe, but that's I think, that's I, still I think, a point. I think, I think a bigger than maybe, because um, I think he'd be he'd be wasted to just wait until his movie to bring him in because he's he's a time traveler, man. He's gotta he's gotta be doing other stuff they would they would i would be flummoxed if they made the choice to be like no nah, well we'll just save him for for ant-man like he'll, he, they got us I, yeah, I feel like it's going to be if it is can i can 
I feel like it'll be spread out more. I don't, I don't know. I feel like we're mm. not going to see him in this last episode. I feel like we're going to be left with a, not an entirely wrapped up story, but another, like a really good cliffhanger, like an ambiguous cliffhanger. But then girl, I challenge you. When will we see him? When will we see him? Because if we don't see him now, where will we see him? I, I would love to when know. Did, tell me, see, tell me. Because I tell. I, when did we see Thanos? Right after New York? Right before? We saw uh, Thanos. Yeah, right after yeah, New York. Right after the Battle of New York. God. Those were his little prawn babies that he sent down into Manhattan. Yeah. Man, okay, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, Ryan. It's just so good. I'm not ready for this to be over. This is I, I honestly the, the best. The best. And I love that they're short. Personally, personally, from a comic book loving perspective, this is probably the most Marvel experience I think I've ever seen. For me, for Yeah, it's definitely the most comic booky yeah. one. Um, from a seen. film perspective, it's just so well done. The effort, the mm -hmm. time, like even something small, like in episode four, the fact that they were playing the theremin, like it's it just yeah. the effort that they put in and the details. Like I, I, I just love the content right now. It's just so good. And I, I, when I wanted to keep going to be, I like that the ends of these shows are very ambiguous. Like they're, they're deep, they're good endings, but they're, you, you're left with a lot more questions and answers mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm wondering if loki will be the same we won't necessarily get to see the wizard well maybe we'll get to hear the wizard but we may not be able to see the wizard because you also have to realize like you have a wizard and then you have the wicked uh the wicked witch of the east yeah so you there's more i feel like so there is a so are we are you so wait, are you saying that we're going to only get the Wicked Witch then and not the wizard himself? Yeah. Wait, are you guys both positing that this is going to end with Hagrid breaking down a door <laughs> and saying you're a wizard, You're a Loki. wizard, Loki. I took you on me motorbike. I, I, okay, you want to, you want to get really crazy? I, I would love to see that this time wasteland is actually like that castle you saw was doom dr doom's castle and doom's just there waiting oh 100%. That's shit i would Ryan. love that i would love that i think that's a better ending. I, I, better ending like if if you wanted like marvel fans to just like jump out of a window in excitement <laughs> like that's that's how you do it. You just do do like everyone's expecting Kang, give him Doctor yes. Doom. Like just go completely the other way and yet give so give an equal like give a character of equal deserving like spotlight attention that that kind of character. And that would be fun personally cuz like for a minute there I'm like, wow, it kind of looks like a, you know, like a castle. Like, you know, that's some that's that's a place Doom, Doctor Doom could live in. To be fair, to be fair, um I again, it's just what motivation does he have to be there? And why is he in like the wasteland of time? If, if, if they're going secret wars, it does make sense because in the end it's a massive war. And he, he knew that like, Hey, if I run this world, like I, I can run it, like I can do it. And, and the world will, the world will move on. And this is the only solution. And it would be interesting to see that in the sense of like, Maybe he didn't win the first time and then he's just stuck there. And then Loki's his opportunity to hit reset because now he knows to how to fix all the mistakes and, and go back. Like it's just a patient doom, you know, would do something like that. It would make sense, right? I that would love this. require a hell of a lot of foresight. That is some because I mean, Secret Wars, if we even get it, that's probably what, like phase six? That's a lot. Like that's a yeah, that's a long way down that yellow brick road. But plant so that seed, yeah. right? Give us the Thanos yeah. scene from End of Avengers 1. And I'm telling you, that's that's the way to do it. But, I mean, to be fair, if we don't get Kang, I would not be surprised, but I would be disappointed. Because, again, we need something. We need something to just, like, you know, we need something to... We need a fire of some yeah. sort. We got the spark, but we don't have we don't have the fire we, yet. We, we need, need something, something to, to light the fire to run the torch, right? And like, I mean, 
if you want to talk Kang, like you could see Kang in the multiverse of madness because Doctor Strange is, is messing with time itself with the time stone. So that would be kind of cool. But again, you're not going to get many opportunities to see Kang. So it only makes sense to have him in this show. It only makes sense. And it's why, like, it's kind of like one of those things of like, why would you announce the casting of Kang this early on if you weren't going to use the actor at all? Right. No, you're, no, no. you're absolutely right. And I mean, there's no better place to drop him. We're literally, we have one of our main characters. Is, We're in his bedroom. You know, his wife. We're in his <laughs> We're bedroom. We're so close. We're, yeah. If, if they have no intention of putting King in the show, then this was all just sneaky Feige from start to finish. So there you will, you will get your Kang wish, sir. If you don't get it here, they purposefully left him out just to toy with people like oh you. My God. <laughs> um, there's, there's a cool little Easter egg I wanted to bring up. I'm pretty the positive. Both- because that's a real thing in the comics. The what? I didn't even the see what? it. I didn't even see the Thanos copter. <laughs> The Thanos helicopter? There was a Thanos helicopter? Yeah, I didn't see this what? thing. It's in like the beginning it's in the beginning of the episode when all the Lokis are going to the underground, yeah. you know, Christmas castle, whatever. And on their way there, if you look in the background, there's a yellow helicopter with the word Thanos written across it. And that's exactly what the helicopter looked like in the comics, because Thanos had a helicopter. That guy has you know, the for those- stones and need a helicopter, he can fly. Those days when just yep. traffic is too heavy, you gotta fly you to, over can you everybody. Get the Thanos helicopter for me, please. Thank you, Minion. Thank you. That's like there, there's a I think a Superman comic where the comic literally ends with Darkseid being arrested by the cops, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "I'll I'll get out of this someday, Superman. I'll come back for you." Uh, but no, I didn't see that Thanos copter at all. I saw the Polybius arcade cabinet inside. The oh my hideout. god, I really, I want to like pause that entire room and just look at it. There were just so much stuff. And even mm-hmm. when it was going like through the ground, all the, all the lunch trays, it just, it was, it, I, I kept trying to rewatch it and pause and take photos, but it was hard. Everything was so fast. There, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's the set designers. You could tell they just, they had the time yeah. of their freaking that life. That episode to me was the room. most colorful too. You went from very, it was very muted, colorful neutrals to lots of dark, like very different shades of green yellow blue so it's very bright that whole the, the place where they the loki's all hung out like it looked like a place harley quinn yeah. would hang out in like it was just bedecked with color um but the polybius cabinet made me smile because i'm like obsessed with the polybius myth uh, if there's any any of our listeners who don't know what polybius is in short it's uh, an arcade cabinet it's an urban legend. There's no proof that it existed of an arcade machine that somehow started appearing in like pizza parlors in Portland, Oregon around 1981. And according to the legend, kids who played on this machine would get seizures and develop like amnesia, night terrors, suicidal thoughts. And the the machine would be visited at odd hours of the night by men in black suits who would check computer readings at the back of the machine and like collect data and then drive off into the night. And then one day all these machines just suddenly vanished as quickly as they'd arrived. And that is the myth of Polybius. And nobody knows who started this myth or why or how. It might just be some fun creepy pasta somebody was up to. But uh, I love that myth. And so when I saw that in here, it, it gave me a smile. It's almost like a Mandela effect yeah. kind of thing. Like whether or not it was actually there. And the Berenstein Bears is actually there. Berenstein Bears. There was something else, too. There's a lot of those with, like, dead celebrities. Yeah. Like, didn't so-and-so die? Because it started with Nelson Mandela, with thinking he was dead when he wasn't. And Mm. I know there was another celebrity. Oh, I know who it is. Um, It's it's, uh, J. Jonah Jameson, Ed Asner from the 90s cartoon. Oh, yes. I thought he was dead for the longest time, and a lot of other people did, too. He's still, I think he's still totally- Hundred percent alive, I think so. Let me see. He I did. He did. Right he did up, didn't he? And then there was a recent post he did as well. Let's see. Bur- Ed I'm pretty sure. Burns I'm. I'm pretty sure he's still alive. He's still alive, and he's 91 years old. Yeah. God bless him. Yeah, but yeah. I know for a fact I have heard him dead been many times. announced dead 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, yeah, that like that, like apparently like there's uh alternate reality where there's the Bernstein yes. bears and then there was the Berenstein bears. bears. And people and absolutely reality, recall <laughs> recall that the spelling is like this yes. and they've seen it. Yes, yes. It's just like it's funny how your brain will just make assumptions about things and you you're you convince no, yeah. but I read it. But I read it. <sighs> Or like yeah. when you remember like a, a film or like a TV show from when you were a kid and then when you watch it 30 years later, you're like, oh, that's not how I remember I, it. Like it was burned in your yeah. mind so intensely and then you're like, oh man, I can't wait to see that again. Oh, that's yes. all it was. That's how I feel okay. about movies, like scary movies that I watch as a child that like, you know, traumatize me like Freddy Krueger. There's a scene, I think, I, can't, I think it's Close Encounters of the Third Time. It, or I can't remember of the third kind. I don't remember if that's the name of the movie, but it was like a popular 70s movie about alien abduction. And there's like a scene that like mm-hmm. was like seared into my brain. And then I rewatched the movie as an adult. And I'm like, really? It's stupid. <laughs> this is yeah. Dumb. It's like you remember things so things vividly in us. your mind. Uh, that's so fascinating. Yes. That's th- like, I love the way memory <laughs> works and the way it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes it can be a jerk. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever watched the movie, the people under the stairs? No. It's a Wes Craven horror movie from like 91. And I used to watch it all the time when I was little. I don't know why I was loud, <laughs> but I watched it all the time. And then when I watched it as an adult, I was like, Wait, this movie's not about ah! ghosts? I thought it was. <laughs> I was so my childhood memories of it were so misinformed. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> what other reality? I mean, I mean <laughs> Well, that's it, right? Like what other realities out there cuz you know, from what I'm seeing, like people are swearing that they've seen all these things that are going to happen in Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh-huh. But I swear I've I've heard it all. But with I mean, let's let's bring it back to Loki here, people. Let's let's we've been tipping toeing around it. Let's go into the nitty gritty. Episode six. What do we think is going to happen? Give us the gory details. Anna, start us off here, I girl. Take us home. I don't think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get to meet a witch. I think she will be enchantress. I think that's what it is because you don't get to meet the wizard. Wait, when does she? Yeah, after she defeats the witch. So I feel like we've got such a strong Wizard of Oz vibe. That's what it feels like. Or we're gonna see Loki. A, like a more like self-aware Loki, an evolved Loki. Okay. Yeah. I know you really want to. Right. I just I'm hoping it's something like this. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I like this. I like this. Um I guess I'll go next. Um I think Kang is gonna have a scene with Christine Everhart where she's like, look, I'm an nihilist, <laughs> don't tell anybody. Um <laughs> But I think, like I said, I think we're in for an ending that is not yes. happy. And I have no frame of reference to base this off of. This is just off the top of my head. What I see happening is this. Something is going to happen. Again, don't know. Not really important. But something's going to happen where in order to survive and win and escape or whatever, Sylvie is going to make a sacrifice. And what that sacrifice is, is she's going to enchant herself to kind of erase all of her memories of everything that has happened to her. So she'll forget that she knows Loki. She'll forget all that stuff in order to save him and in order to save like Mobius and everybody else. And in doing so, she will kind of blank slate herself and that will create the enchantress persona that we will eventually end up with. Like she'll basically wipe her own mind and she'd be like, I don't know who I am. I guess I'm a villain. Screw you guys. But she does that to save Loki's life and, and and get them out of that situation. That's the sacrifice she has to make. It's not going to end with them happily skipping back into the real world, arm in arm and being a a hunky. I just feel like it's really odd that this episode really made a point to show us. There's so many different, like there's a alligator Loki, but you're telling me there's only one female Loki out of all these timelines, not a single Mm -hmm. female narcissist. Like, they do exist. I, that's why. Yeah, right. yeah, that's why I'm like. I just. I. That's why I don't believe she's a Loki. That's why it's like. I think she's got to be enchantress. And either we. It's like you know. It is Kang that we do not necessarily get to see, but we get to have another insinu strong insinuation of. But she 
needs to wake up to realize what she is. It, it's a bold choice. You're right to, because I guess there's a couple different ways you could do multiverses mm -hmm. and the multiverse I had in my head until this episode was every Loki variant we meet is going to be, you know, Tom Hiddleston in a wig or Sylvia. Yeah. But the fact that we can have Lokis that look so vastly different, then that's, you know, now all bets are off. Now, like, you know, Michelle Rodriguez could be Doctor Strange in another reality. Like, it could be anything. So if that's the multiverse they're going with, then we're playing with a, we're playing a totally different game than I was expecting. <laughs> you guys both have really good ones. I, you do. I know, you right? Do. I I personally feel I'm going to go out, way out on the deep end here. So listeners, I tell you guys right now, you're getting you guys you guys have been given two very factually based and very sophisticated uh, endings that could definitely be a possibility of how it could play out. Me, I'm gonna I'm gonna just take it as far as I can go. Um, for me, I personally feel that I like the idea that we haven't seen the final Loki variant, which is like the ultimate dark and super savvy one. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that idea. However, I don't know. I don't know the how, but I know what's going to, I, I, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know what I think is going to happen. And that is whatever the conclusion is, they're going to think they reached the finishing line. And the truth is it's just another curtain. That's going to just be pulled away and it's going to lead to them because again, they're always survivors. They're not, they're not winners. Yeah. So I, I don't think they're going to win. I think they're going to, I think they're just going to hit this, like get to the end of the road kind of thing and just realize that there's nothing, there's nothing oh. like there's no way they can change what's going on because that's the, that's the timeline. Like that's, that is what it is. Uh, I feel like when they reveal that final curtain, we're going to see a holographic head of Kang because that's the comic book we usually see is just the giant floating head. And he's going to be like, you think you, you think you figured it all out and just, you know, basically verbally lay the verbal smack down that they're, you know, they're less than nothing in the timeline and that, you know, what's written for them is, is this ending that they're going to get. Um, and then he, and through this action, uh, Ravana is get, they're going to have a confrontation, one more confrontation with Ravana, and they're gonna they're gonna either stab her or something. Something's going to happen to her, and Kang is going to the end credit sequence is Kang coming in and teleporting her away. So you kind of see him trying to save her. That's what I think is going to happen. Don't ask me how we're going to get there. Don't ask me how the conflict's going to arise to that. But I just feel like there's going to be one more curtain pull and you're going to see the giant floating head of Kang. And um, and he's and he's just going to lay the verbal smack down that they're absolutely, you know, you, you think you, you have this glorious purpose. But I know time. I am the I am the master of time. I've seen I've seen it all. And and just, you know, let this be a reminder that you guys, your glorious purpose is to is is where you are right now which is nothing and like leave them leave them just broken and there ryan you wow. are perfect <laughs> i love this <laughs> except i would be that except i don't i wouldn't want ravina there i think mobius will deal with her i would like to her to be separate from the storyline and for it to be even colder than that. <laughs> yeah. see the holographic head and just like there's just nothing and then just closes it and traps them there and that's the end <laughs> that's it like or even like even like as he teleports like or whatever like kang the kang head goes away you see the ship take yeah. off and like just leave him yes. because oh, because to me i feel like the the most significant one of the most significant moments in the show was when they were in the apocalypse and they watched they they, they watched that ship get destroyed and yes you know, kind of play on that one more time, but actually have the ship just Please. leave them. Uh, Ryan, you're so good. You're so good. I hope that's how it ends. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I appreciate the, the encouragement in my theory, uh, but I, I, I still think it's a deep end theory. It's because it's, it's the only problem I can't see 
is I can't see how the conflict will lead to that result. Do either of you see a world where Loki, Tom Hiddleston, Loki gets out of this show and he's, you know, walking around interacting with like Thor and everybody again afterwards, or is, have we seen the last of that? Yeah. This is this is a passing of the torch, hundred mm. percent. Um, I think we'll see more of Sylvie. Actually, mm. I don't think this is the last oh, we'll yeah. see of Sylvie. The, the sure. reception the reception for her has been beyond amazing. Um, not only that, I think that as an actor, she she not only gets the character, but she understands the language of like the the MCU and just I want I just want to see her interact with other characters. Mm-hmm. I would, I, I mean, you know, we, we were hinting at, I, we're hinting at an episode that uh, Fantasia and I are thinking of with the villains. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it for, for, for everyone Fantasia, but we want to pick top villains, but there oh, is a wait. villain. Okay. There is a villain I would love to see. Um, and Sylvie could play a, a similar role um, as a character in interacting with, with someone like Doctor Strange, but I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to say who it is. Um, but yeah, I think I think Sylvie. I think we're going to see a lot more of Sylvie. I think that this is. I think that what we're seeing in in, in the making is a new antihero. Another antihero. A full on like a like we're like is like at this point in in the Marvel world. And they did it with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and they've done it with WandaVision. Um, and I'll be very curious to see with Widow coming out this Friday, as of the as of the time we were recording this. Uh, I think we're seeing characters now. It's not it's not a matter of like black yeah. and white anymore. It's just characters and choices. And I think that's gonna that's why we're gonna see a, a, an X Men movie of of sorts because we're going to see just different views colliding with each other. And I think with Sylvie, I think she's going to be a very anti-hero like character because she seems to understand she has a, she has a good moral compass, but in terms of like, these people are bad and she needs to stop them. But at the same time, she also challenges, she just, she's a a character that challenges the, the norm. And I think that's where Marvel's going. Like, with a lot of their characters is this, they challenge, they challenge the norm. And I can't wait to see Sylvie do more with that. Well, Scarlet, um, Black Widow is an anti-hero. She's the ultimate anti-hero, right? So I think we are developing these themes with these very strong anti-hero women. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think there's room for a lot more, like a lot more. Um, but I mean, at the same time, we are, we are seeing, we are going to see more heroes. I mean, we're going to get She-Hulk, which is going to be the most badass hero out there. You guys have no idea how psyched I am to see She-Hulk. Uh, Girl Thor. I'm excited for her. Yeah, Lady Thor, man. uh, Thor. I'm I'm also excited uh, in terms of anti heroes. I'm also excited to see Moon Knight based on what I've read about this character and and I apparently need to read the comic, uh, the new comic that they did uh, a couple years back where they kind of re released the story. But he's an interesting character. Like the stuff he gets into is pretty weird, but it's pretty cool. But all these characters seem to challenge the norm in their own with their own views. <coughs> Yeah, with Moon Knight, for me, my my biggest fear is that I don't want it to end up just looking like the Daredevil show, but the guys in yeah. a white suit instead of red. And from you're not, what you're I, not I, get I know, that. you're not okay, going to get that. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> I know so little about him, but all I know is he has like a club and he's really good at martial arts and he goes on rooftops. And I'm like, okay, it sounds like just Daredevil in a white outfit, and I don't want them to just do that show again with this dude like make it something different so i'm i'm glad to hear that that's definitely not what we're getting what you're gonna get is an indiana jones-esque experience with moon knight i hope so and i mean i mean this character suffers from uh from uh multiple personality disorder 
So they're going to get really weird with that character. Let me tell you right now, it's going to get really weird. But my point, but my point is going back to Loki, I think we will see more of Sylvie. I think this is the last we'll see of Hiddleston um, in, in a principal role capacity. If we do see him, maybe a cameo, maybe like a little chuckle here and there. But I don't think we'll see him in a in a full on principal role where he'll drive the story Loki in some way, die. shape, or form. He 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 has to die. He's gonna die. I think he will die this le- next yeah. episode. I think we. I think that Marvel has been preparing us for that since he was pruned the first time. Exactly. He's we we spent a year and a half, or a year rather accepting the fact that Thanos killed him. So we, we're already, we already have it in like We've in our programming. But yeah, we lost Loki. We've already mourned him and moved on. We it's, started dating other people. So it, it's funny that you bring that up though. Uh, and, and I totally forgot about that. But even, even as a writer, Fantasia, I mean, this character has died numerous times, like number of times. So wouldn't it make sense for the Loki's own show to end with like a final farewell. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A final farewell, an emotional farewell, the farewell that, you know, he gets to die on his own terms and not just Thanos yeah. breaking his neck. Uh, and make it, and if it is a glorious death, make it a final yeah. death. Don't J.J. Abrams it and be like, no, everything's okay. Yeah. No, nobody dies. Yeah, nobody dies. it goes. It Your goes death. kind of full circle because when Loki first died, he kind of like, you know, I love my, you know, he turned over a new leaf, right? After the events of Ragnarok, he grew and he's like, you know, embracing, loving his brother. So in this one, if he does die, it's full circle. He grew, you know, he, he again, he learned that it's like, you know, this is, I'll never get anywhere if I keep doing the same thing. And he gets to die loving another blonde person. <laughs> that's why i'm like i don't just love them blondes Loki. it's like she represents a little bit more than that like i mean we never got to see romantic love from loki but it was nice to see him love nonetheless love is a dagger man love is a dagger that dagger's got to go somewhere mm. <laughs> wow well done. <laughs> for those of you, um, for those of you listening to this podcast, as opposed to watching it, um, I just like totally embodied death. Pants off. That's what happened. <laughs> he took his pants off. Yeah. <laughs> you guys <laughs> missed out on some pants. We know what death looks like now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is truly burdened with glorious yes, purpose. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> Oh, speaking of God. speaking of glorious, I want to give a shout out to Natalie Holt, and Natalie Holt is the person who composed the music, uh, if not for the whole series, and at least for this episode, because the music this episode yes. was off the friggin' yes. chain. So, mm-hmm. Natalie, we are not worthy. Oh, wonderful! It was so good. Mm-hmm. Any final thoughts oh, on, man. Uh, on episode uh, five? I think it's my favorite episode. I, I'm already going to say it. Let's see. Well, you know, maybe episode six will top it. But honestly, this episode, even watching it twice, I was still pacing. I was still so excited. It was so visually interesting. So much to look at. I felt like even watching it a second time, it wasn't enough. Like I really wanted to take like still shots of a lot of scenes. The music was great. The pacing, the dialogue, everything just felt so good. Well said. Ryan, any final thoughts? And where can people find you to tell you how right you are about Kang showing up in episode six? <laughs> uh, find me on Twitter. Um, uh, my my boy Chrissy's, uh, you know, we were talking about Loki. And, um, and yeah, you know what? If you wanted to find me on Twitter, guys, and just tell me if I'm right or wrong, that's where you're going to find me at Crusader Online. And I'd love to see, hear your thoughts and all that wonderful goodness. Where do I think, first of all, the show, I think this is the best Disney Plus show yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I do love Falcon Winter Soldier a lot. WandaVision was a great start. Um, but for me, it just didn't, it just quite hasn't, it didn't quite land the way I wanted it to in, in terms of just just my own subjective opinion. 
Um, I think it's a great show. And I think that she, I think that WandaVision definitely is a pioneer and deserves all the love for that. But for like rewatching love and everything, Loki just, just stole it and ran like Loki did what Loki does with the whole mischievous way. And that is come in totally, you know, totally have fun in so many mischievous ways and create just this experience that I will never forget. Um, So episode five, emotionally speaking, it was probably the best one yet because I'm, I'm literally on the edge of my seat of like, what's going to happen to these characters. Um, in terms of events, I still think the last episode was slightly better only because we saw the room of Kangs and that just like blew my mind. Uh, and, and the wiz- and the, and the, the fact that I'm kind of going on this wizard of Oz path because of that last episode, um, man, I think it's, I, again, this show, I think they, I think the MCU can learn a lot from specifically this Disney plus series and what you can do with, infinite other disney plus series. telling stories properly and developing characters in a meaningful way because we're not children yeah. dc you hear this that is, this is this is not a show for kids like this is this no. is not a show for kids no. in the end it's fun and it's entertaining but i think this is i think this just grabs all the right audiences at all the right age like without being like a childish um experience it's it's like uh it's like the x-men cartoon it's just the the content has so much substance to it and the older you get the more you see like where the story was going um but in the end it's still like it it, in the end it's still just this entertaining marvel experience Mm -hmm. and loki i think takes the crown on that the horned crown absolutely i'm so jealous of kids who get to grow up with this stuff you guys don't know how good you have it. Um, my final thoughts are great music, outstanding music, great episode. I'm glad the big cloud monster did not end up being the final villain. Because if Fantastic Four 2 and the Green Lantern movie have taught us anything, it's that final villains do not make great clouds and vice versa. Um, I You can find me on Twitter at Andrew Fantasia and sometimes and on Instagram at Andrew Fantasia more often. And here on the Rebels Come Podcast Network talking about... Rebel scum and Imperial scum and First Order scum, because that's yeah. still a thing, apparently. All hail Snoke. Snoke lives. Hashtag safe Snoke. Uh, <laughs> that has been Loki Episode 5. Anna, thank you so much once again thank you for, for joining us. Me. Ryan, you're a handsome, sexy yes. beast, and you have to play Thanos' uh, henchman every time yes. he shows up from now on. Do it one more time before I end our episode. <laughs> Uh, you dare question him <laughs> <laughs> the man who bestowed <laughs> uh, I, I, I will also I will also want to end this with like a small end credit thing that Fantasia is going to appreciate there's rumors rumors ladies and gentlemen that the Fantastic Four villain is going to be a nihilist no! Leslie Bibb is free she's got nothing else going on <laughs> We're not making trick or treat too, as far as I know. She's free. There we go. You're welcome. <gasps> Christine Everhart for president, 2028. <laughs> Have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.